Hey guys, Thunder E here, and today we're taking a look at Amazon's Lunar versus Google Stadia. Now we know very well Google Stadia is a game service that has been on for at least a year, where you can use it on your uh, smartphone, on your laptop, as well as also on your TV. Lunar is something new from Amazon, it came out about two months ago in November, December of 2020. And as a game streaming service, it's one that gives you access on your TV via an Amazon Fire Cube or Fire Stick, as well as also uh, through your computer or your laptop uh, using the Luna web service. It is currently in beta. And what's different with Luna is that you've got access through the Luna controller. The Luna controller gives you access to play Luna games and it connects via Wi-Fi over uh, the internet. So if you're playing over on your laptop, it's connected via to your laptop, which is pretty easy and you've got a direct connection. If you're playing on your TV as such, you have to pair the controller, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, quickly looking at the controller itself, it looks like a standard x ball styled controller. I do like the grip and spacing on here. You've got nice trigger buttons, and you've also got USB Type-C uh, to actually use for data connection or power if you don't have batteries. As you can see, Amazon logo, logo at the bottom, and we do have, of course, uh, two AA batteries here. D-pad seems nice. Uh, the thumbsticks seem solid. You do have the Luna button and of course the microphone button. Now let's go ahead and pair that controller up. To pair the Luna controller to your uh, Fire Stick, you need to use the Luna app to do that. Uh, and when you put in pair mode by pretty much pressing and holding it down, you add the controller, hit next, and you will find the controller and connect it via Wi-Fi. Actually, it doesn't connect to your Fire Cube, it just connects to the same network that your Fire Cube or your Fire Stick is on to give you the fastest uh, uh, connection and slowest input lag. So go in there to Thunder Network and then we have this being paired, which is pretty cool because this is the same way, of course, Stadia does it with their own system, giving you the fastest connection from your controller and boom, your controller is connected to the Fire Cube and you can start playing. So this is the TV experience of Luna. You've got a nice interface that shows you, first off, the, what games you're playing, uh, editor's picks, uh, and then you've got newly added to Luna. Uh, you've got the Luna channel itself, and what they have are separate channels. So Luna channel, all the games uh, that you will find there should be free on the Luna channel. Uh, and then you've got Ubisoft's uh, channel. Now, this is the channel where you can play Ubisoft games through the subscription service. So new games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Immortal Phoenix Rising, Watch Dogs, Far Cry, um, and then you've got your playlist of games that you've actually saved. It's a very simple uh, interface, it works pretty well, it's really smooth, and this is something, of course, just banking on the history of what they've done with uh, Fire Stick altogether. Now, if you go into an individual game, so I'll go back to the games I was playing, uh, and I can jump into one that's probably pretty quick, would be something like Contra. So I can go into Contra, I can see trailers, screenshots, and you can see more games that are related in that connection. I can add to remove from my playlist, and I can play now. Start to play. And that's a really cool thing about game streaming services is that I can go ahead and do this. Now, some of you might be thinking, you know, this is an old school game, so it's easy. Um, you know, it's easy for, for you to actually go ahead and do that. But what it is, what you get here is you get a service that allows you to play something quite quickly and quite easily. So I died there. I'm just gonna go ahead and switch to a different game. So I'll tap on the Luna button, exit. Here's exit this game. And since this is a beta service, it's still gonna ask you if there are any issues and things like that. As you can see, there were none. So we skip that, we go back and we say, look, you know what? Let's play something more current. Let's go ahead and play some Grid. Now, Grid is a racing game. Uh, it's more current from Codemasters. We can go ahead, as you can see, the pricing of the Luna controller is right there on screen,
You have a game like Control, which is a very new game, or at least it's a, it's a much newer game than a lot of people have been talking about. And you can see right here, we're playing about 1080p. Uh, it looks close to 60 FPS. I can't really give you the correct gauge, but it's been pretty smooth. Um, gameplay looks pretty nice. And you get the general idea, but the ability to jump in and play any of these any of these kind of games, uh, be it on your your laptop or your Fire Stick, goes a long way. And I think that's what game streaming services aim to provide to a lot of users, especially something like Luna. So one of the things you do have with Stadia is you get a lot of free games on a monthly basis. And these are a ton which I have collected as buy games. I think I've only bought one game, which is Mortal Kombat 11. And that's the game we're gonna check out. And again, the flexibility of Stadia is moving between the desktop experience uh, and the TV experience to a mobile experience. So uh, between this and Luna, you can go through three platforms uh, by sitting in front of your TV with Chrome, uh, on the desktop or the computer, and of course, on your mobile device. And this time, of course, it's my S21 Ultra, and I am using the Razer Kishi right here. So one of the things you do have, of course, is being able to jump in and play. Now, what a lot of people have noticed with Stadia is that Stadia has improved over time, especially with connectivity. I do have a fast internet at home. I've got gigabit internet, but you can see how smooth it is going through the options, selecting my fighter, uh, then selecting an opponent, uh, which would be Sub-Zero this time. And again, once we jump into the match, you'll see how fast and smooth it is. Now, the thing you have with Stadia as well as also Luna is the fact that with both services, you are able to jump right into the gameplay. There is no load times like you do have with um, uh, Xbox Game Pass. But again, we're gonna just see how some of this gameplay actually functions. And it feels pretty smooth and fast. Oof. And you know, you get the idea of of how this actually functions. I think overall, a lot of people will like the experience Stadia brings to the table. And I do like what Stadia has become and how fast and easy it is to use. So I can, of course, use the functionality of my Kishi. And if you guys wanna check out more stuff on the Kishi, I have a bunch of uh, videos on there about the Razer Kishi and some of the functionality you get with it. Uh, but you can see how smooth it is, especially with a good connection. So if you've got fast internet at home, I think anything above 75 megabits per second works well for Stadia. If you've also got 5G connection, you're gonna get a really smooth gameplay experience. Uh, check out my 5G gameplay. Uh, I'll have that link for you guys below, uh, which I did, yes, last year on my channel, uh, uh, Board at Work. But this is where Stadia really shines. And, you know, a lot of people have talked about the fact that Cyberpunk 2077 probably ran the best in terms of console versions on Stadia as opposed to the old original Xbox One or One X or the PS4. Uh, I think that's something to take note and is quite good and effective. I think overall, when we look at both services, you realize that they do have some great things to offer. Luna is just starting and we'll have to see how far they push it, especially with Amazon having Twitch in its back pocket and they have done really well with that service. We'll love to see the integrations there. We'll love to see more partners. I do like the idea of the channels. So if you're part of say Ubisoft's uh, streaming uh, subscription service, you can use that, which you can use it on with anything. So it doesn't matter if you're downloading the game or streaming the game. And I like to see more, um, connectivity as well there with more games coming to Luna uh, because right now it seems like it's uh, it's quite a limited view. On Stadia on the other hand, Stadia has a ton of games you can go through and it's really exciting to see that they've really stepped up their game, especially with you know word about Cyberpunk 2077 running really well on Stadia and a lot of those games run well with the connectivity. Now we heard today that Stadia, Google is shutting down Stadia's in-house uh, game studios which doesn't bode well in my mind for the longevity of the service. As we know, Google usually tends to 
shut things down when they're thinking of ending something. So hopefully this is maybe just the case that they realize that the in-house studio isn't that great. Maybe they might go out and purchase a studio or maybe they think that they can fully rely on third parties to bring games to the service. But I think overall, I like where game streaming is. I know you guys are probably wondering why didn't I add uh, Xbox Game Pass. I think it's a little different for this video. I wanted to just compare two game streaming services together, especially ones that are truly away from game consoles. So let me know what you think about Amazon Luna or Google Stadia. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.